I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. For the last six years, the Broadway musical Beautiful has entertained audiences with the remarkable life and music of Carole King. The show will close at the end of the month, completing more than 2,000 shows. And today I'm sitting down with stars Sarah Buckle and Corey Giacoma to talk about their performances, the music, and the legacy of Beautiful. Welcome, guys. How you doing? Put your hands together, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hey. Um, I got to see the show for the first time a couple nights ago, and you guys were so phenomenal. I want to know just for you guys, knowing that it's kind of like coming to a close at the end of the month, does every show just feel extra special? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can't really speak much to that because I've only been in it for a month now. Um, so every show, I'm just like, oh, I don't want it to end. Um, now, Sarah's been doing it for how, how long have you been in it? Uh, four years I've been doing it. So I, I yeah, it, it gets more and more special. And as like those moments that you're still kind of working on and kind of refining, it gets, you know, each moment becomes more precious. Let's talk about your history with the show because it is pretty long. So where did that start? Uh, I, I started on the first national tour and I was an understudy for Abby Mueller, mm -hmm. um, which was incredible. Um, she definitely taught me how to how to be a leading lady and, and how to do the show. And uh, and then I understudied uh, Julia Nitel on the tour. A totally different, totally equally amazing Carol. Um, and I, I loved understudying her. And then I, I left the tour and they brought me back as Carol. And I got to do a quick little Broadway debut in there just to cover uh, an absence. And then I've been on the tour ever since. Um, I got to come to Broadway in May and now I'm back on Broadway. Yeah. What is it about this musical that keeps you? Because I mean, touring, that's not easy. You're on the road a lot, you're, it must be exhausting. So what keeps you just so interested in, in this musical? I, I just love the music and I, it's really rare that you don't get super sick of a, yeah. of a, of a show that you're singing eight times a week. And I, I just look forward to it every night and I, I feel like at home yeah. singing the music. And Corey, this is your Broadway debut. Sure is. Guys, the, the give butt. it up, Corey. That's so <laughs> cool that this is your Broadway debut. Yeah. Uh, what was that process leading up to this role? Like, what was going on? How'd you get it? Uh, it was fast and furious and terrifying. Um, it, you know, I, I auditioned for it in May, and at that point, they hadn't announced closing. And so then, about two weeks before I started rehearsal, they announced closing. I was like, "You're kidding!" Oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, but you know, then uh, then the the rehearsal process was quick. And uh, since Sarah had done it, we didn't get too much time together to build that chemistry. But thank God, we we just hit it off right away, and uh, and everything was there. Um, and the company has been so warm and so welcoming, and made the seven day rehearsal process seem like it was a month long. Um, you only had seven days? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's how, terrifying. <laughs> so how does that work? They give you a script, and they're like, learn it, and then all the block, everything. Is yeah, well, you know, they they I think we would all hope that anyone would come in with everything memorized so that you can just focus on what you don't know at that point. Um, and so I, I came in with everything memorized, and the music learned, and I'd been watching the show leading up to the rehearsal process. And uh, and thank God I had Evan Todd and Nathan Sherrick uh, who were who were going back and forth uh, with Jerry uh, to sort of look at and you know mold my Jerry around theirs. Um, yeah, and you know it was it was terrifying, and there'll never be enough time to sure. to be like, oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> that makes what you guys do so much more impressive, just how kind of quickly you have to acclimate and just be yeah. amazing. But so. it, it never gets boring. Yeah. Too, yeah. It, it's so nice, you know, to have new energy and and somebody that's bringing something completely different to the role, and then you have to adjust on the spot. And but it makes you, you know, feel like it's the art is you know living and and growing as you're watching it, so it makes it a lot more fun. I guess that's Broadway, right? That's it. <laughs> Let's talk about forming these characters, because they're real people, mm -hmm. and we've had other amazing performers portray them in the past. So Sarah, for you, what did you try to bring to Carol that was different or unique to you? Like, how do you sort of approach her in your own way? I, I had a, a lot of freedom. I think all the Carols kind of have, have freedom from the creative team to develop the character very closely to themselves, which is really nice. Yeah, because she is a real person. So you kind of have to separate the character a little bit because you're never going to be the Carol King. She is her own. Carol King. <laughs> she is Carol King. Uh, and, and so I think to take the pressure off of yourself, you have to just approach it from from an honest, truthful place. And 
I did feel really prepared to step into the role because I had understudied these two amazing women, because I had seen, you know, so many iterations of the show. And, and so I, I kind of felt like I could make it my own. And, you know, because she's funny, she's goofy, she's insecure, she's real. So it, it, it didn't seem that hard. Yeah. Is there something specifically, though, that you wanted to bring to the role when you got to take it on as the principal? You know, like a song that you really wanted to punch up or change or, you know, anything like that? I, I really wanted to show her coming into her own, her, her growth. I wanted to show that she really was uncomfortable in her body, really is like, doesn't know how to believe in herself and, and, and to ha have her find that slowly throughout the story, little bits of independence, little bits of, of confidence, yeah. And, and so that when you get to the end of the show, which is at Carnegie Hall and her big performance, she is kind of uh, fully realized at, at that moment. That was important to me. And you do an amazing job. I did notice that. I mean, I mm -hmm. think anybody watching, but as a woman too, you can see in the beginning how she pulls her sweater. And, yes. You know, all of those things that I know that you pay attention to that detail, then in the end she's walking more proudly and that's just makes yeah. the story so important. Yeah. Um, for you, Jerry again is yeah. this very complicated guy and he's been played by really talented men. So what did you do to sort of bring your own mark to him? You know, as I was watching the show and, and watching those guys I was mentioning before, I found myself sort of slipping into habits, mm -hmm. just copying them almost because they were so great in the roles. Um, and so then I had to stop myself from seeing the show because I was like, create your own damn character, Corey. Um, and so, uh, so something that I that I'm enjoying uh, with Jerry is the arc of his his charm and everything because it's it's very easy to hate Jerry um, because of the fact that you love Carol so much and you're like, why are you doing this? Um, and so uh, so the charm in the beginning and, and the fun numbers that he has, take good care of my baby, where I'm getting to you know sort of goof around and bring a little bit of my goofy self to the character. That's what I, I was really enjoying and that's what I wanted to emphasize. Um, because you know, then the stuff going on at the end of the show, which come check it out, uh, or come check it out, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, it it's that much harder to swallow because you're like, oh, I cared about you, dude. Why why are you doing this? You know. And it is frustrating because they made such amazing music yeah. together, which is, I mean, the heart of this musical is the music. Um, and the best part is the audience. It was like yeah. almost every time you'd play, like maybe like four notes of a song and people are like, oh. my, That's my favorite moment. Is so I was gonna say for you guys on stage, are you aware of the audience oh, yeah. reacting just throughout the show? When I'm on the couch for uh, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, she plays the first chord and, sing, and sings the first few notes and the entire audience just collectively goes, oh. Yeah. And I just like chuckle as I'm sleeping on the couch. <laughs> the night I went, it was uh, You've Got a Friend. It was just like every, is that typical or is it like every night a different song? It's, it's, sometimes it's all of them. Some, and sometimes it's just the tapestry songs. And, and you're like, oh, you were here to hear tapestry. So, and, and we're in the last 20 minutes and so we're going to do that for you. <laughs> no, okay, here we go. Ding, ding, ding. But yeah, it's, it's You've Got a Friend is a, is a big one. Yeah. I would imagine that helps you feel more like these people. When people are react, because that's how people react when Carol sings these songs, you know. Yeah, and it, it makes you realize the power of of shows like this because it, it instantly music is so powerful and it instantly transform or transports the audience, you know, back to where they were when they first heard that song, you know. And and doing a show like this or, or any other jukebox musical of that time, you see people in the audience, you know, grab hands and, and reminisce of these memories that they had from from these incredible songs. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite song to perform? I know that's like a Sophie's choice, but. Mine, mine changes. It used to be It's Too Late, and I still, I really love doing It's Too Late every night. Cause that, was, it's, I, that was my favorite, one of her songs. And like coming in, that was your favorite. Yeah, that was like, you know, the song I had on my like Spotify playlist and, and you know, breakup playlist and whatever. Uh, but now it's definitely beautiful. I, I, I used to kind of feel like when I was singing it, I, I, I didn't believe it. And I felt kind of like, I need to, believe what I'm singing because I'm trying to make other people believe it. You know what I mean? Like you're as beautiful as you feel like, well, I don't feel beautiful today. I feel however I feel, you know, or whatever. And, and so I think it, it's as much for me as it is for the audience. And so it's, it's kind of like an, a daily affirmation. You know what I mean? You, you tell yourself like, I am 
I'm enough or, or whatever, you, you know, you, you tell yourself and you get up and you look in the mirror and, but it, and it's, it's like a, I'm, I'm good enough every day getting to end my day that way. Yeah, especially at the point that that song, song comes in, you've seen her journey and you can really sort of, I mean, for me, it helped me relate more to the lyrics of Tapestry because I maybe didn't fully understand all the stuff she had been through. Definitely. It makes it extra special. How about you? What's a favorite song for you to perform? I really love singing Take Good Care of My Baby, but I, I think that it's sort of because it's terrifying to me, uh, I would say on uh, Up on the Roof because it, it comes out of nowhere. It's There's no accompaniment for the first you know few bars of the song, and so I kind of just have to be like, Okay, here we go. Um, and you know, I get a cue note, but it's terrifying. And there, but there's something thrilling about that. Um, and I, I also just love singing the tune. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned sometimes you it's hard to get in excited, right? Because I mean, doing eight shows a week that just is a lot of work. So what do you guys do pre-show? Do you have rituals? Um, what do you sort of do to get in that mindset? Um. I don't have too many rituals. I try not to get too precious um, about things. Uh, sometimes when I get too in my head about the show, uh, I listen to the news <laughs> because it reminds me that it's not so important. <laughs> Our little show is not so important. Uh, so sometimes that makes me feel better. Uh, and sometimes I listen to music and then I get, you know, I get like hyped up to to sing music that I, I love. and. Um, talking to other you know cast and crew members and r remembering that like this is an awesome job and this is an awesome building full of really incredibly talented people yeah. I, you, you know i it might sound cheesy and it, at the same time morbid in a way uh <laughs> but there was a quote that i was told where it's every show is someone's first show and every show is someone's last show um, and so having that mentality it makes it, you know, it, it avoids the making it too precious, but it also has some weight to it. And it's like, all right, you know, even if I'm exhausted, even if I've got a bit of a cold, even if, you know, I'm going through X, Y, Z, someone is here and they need to see this and someone needs this. And, you know, even if it's a, a show like Beautiful where it's, you know, about the music and it's about, you know, one person's story, someone can relate to that. And that can change someone's day. Um, I also spend the first 10 minutes of the show because I don't enter till like 10 minutes in. This guy's got an easy track. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I spend the first 10 minutes like just sitting in my dressing room singing along with everyone else. So that's my warm up. <laughs> and we bring our dogs. Oh, yeah. We both have dogs. Oh, what are your yeah. dogs' names? Jesse. Jesse. My dog's name is Warren. Oh, Warren Buffett? <laughs> Any Warren you like. Warren you can think of. <laughs> That's cute. So it's like a pet friendly Truly. Yeah. stage. And there's a bunch Ish. of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Do other people bring dogs or just you guys? Yeah, <laughs> we've got a couple dogs in the building and, and it's just the best. Go, going into your dressing room in between scenes being like, how'd I do? And they're stoked to see you every time. <laughs> <laughs> that is, dare I say it, beautiful. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, this, that makes me love the show even more, honestly, is that there's like dogs in the background. Yeah. Um, and also I imagine like you, you said the audience, right? This could be their first show and you want to make it special, but also being on Broadway is such a big deal and there's so many actors and performers who would dream of being in, in your position. So was Broadway always the goal for each of you? Is that something, Sarah, that you always wanted to do? I, I No, I never dreamed that big. I feel like, I well, yeah, I... I I don't know. I I, I, I guess I, I didn't want to set my sights too high, so I, I didn't want to be let down because it is so difficult and, and, and totally, you know, based on, it's pretty subjective, you know, who gets to Broadway. You know, there's so many talented actors in the world and you don't know who's going to make it. <laughs> so, you do, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that it's, it depends on timing. It depends on how prepared you are that day and, and whatever the casting people are looking for. So I I guess I was just so shocked and, and grateful to get there that um yeah, I try I try it's I try not to take it for granted ever. <laughs> yeah. Did you do theater growing up though? Yeah, yeah. Starting I, at what age? Uh oh. 12 13 oh, okay. and and I and I lived in I grew up in Chicago so I guess I just kind of always thought I would do theater in Chicago yeah. and yeah I never thought I'd be in New York City
So what was the first big role for you then, kind of outside of like the maybe academic theater, like outside of that space? Um, I think my first big role was in Into the Woods oh. in in Chicago. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, little storefront theater um, and a kind of a wacky performance not it was not a traditional into the woods and and it, it was definitely something it was one of my favorites and definitely something where I was like this if this could be my life yeah if I didn't have to have a day job while doing this what was that role and then would you ever want to reprise that role again I played Cinderella and Rapunzel oh, everybody wow. played more than one role and we just kind of like <laughs> cool. had different we were on stage the whole time and wearing regular clothes and just yeah, I just had two different tutus that I would switch out. Uh, it was a really cool. I thought it was really cool. It was mixed <laughs> reviews. But uh, I, I would love to. I mean, I, I definitely didn't even know, think of myself as a Cinderella. I thought of myself as a baker's wife. So I was shocked and, like, so thrilled. <laughs> Well, I think that voice can do anything. <laughs> oh my God. So that's, it tries. Unreal. That's my opinion. Yeah. And Corey, for you, was Broadway always the goal? Is it something that you always wanted to accomplish? Yeah, Broadway, Broadway was always on on my mind. Uh, you know, when I was doing it as a kid, I that it, it did seem like this thing. This like you know, it was like whoa, like you're on Broadway. I, it, you know, I would always wait at the stage door and want to meet actors, at, and I still do. Um, but you know, it it was always this thing that seemed. It seemed tangible, but I just didn't know. Like, I, I didn't know how. It was like someone had a key, and I just had to, f like, figure out how to convince them to give it to me. Um, and uh, and I figured it out. <laughs> Got the key. Yes, and not only are you on Broadway, I mean, this show is so iconic for so many reasons. You have, I think, over 2,400 shows by the time everything is said and done. And there's several different shows touring the country. Yeah. So Including what does it mean beautiful. for you to be a part of a show that has just such a community, such a legacy, and will continue to go on? Just, it, it's incredible. And, and that we get to be the, the last Broadway, Carol and Jerry, is is really, special. really special. Not and I feel on us. That's really honored and and so thrilled that I get to to do it because it becomes more and more special as we get closer and closer to the end and and so many people have been coming up you know waiting after the show to say hello and, and to say that this is their first Broadway show which is so great you know when you're closing it's yeah. the uh to get there is be becomes you know and you, you know, so many you people don't. are. Is, no. <laughs> Please take over. <laughs> you know, so many people are, are coming, and I, I'm sure you've experienced this too. So many people are coming up, being like, you know, I this is my first time seeing it, and I wish I had seen it sooner. And we're like, yeah, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, but uh, it, it was always that show. I think that beautiful was always the show that people were like, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Yeah. And uh, and now that it's closing, everyone is is stampeding to get tickets, and and tickets are flying out the window. Thank God. Yeah. And the audience was like full and just so energetic. And I'm sure it's always been like that, but I think it's like even more heightened. Yeah. Um, and I know that Carol King, um, for the five year anniversary, came to the show. Is there any talk of her coming for the end? Oh, I hope so. We don't know. I want to meet her. I want to <laughs> meet her so bad. She's so nice. What <laughs> would you say to Carol King, though, if you do get to meet her? I don't know. Good luck to you, because I can't, I never can talk to her. I'm always like, I have a speech prepared in my head, and yeah. I'm always just like, I would just, I would stumble on my words for sure. I would just probably just thank her and, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm already freaking out. I'm like, what did I say? <laughs> and you have met her, Sarah? Yeah, she saw us. I met her a couple times, but she came and saw the show uh, on tour when we were in Costa Mesa and she came on stage and she surprised us at the end and she sang Earth Move with me and I blacked out. I <gasps> Wait, let's talk about this. I can't, I <laughs> I She's saying with you, you saying with Carol King. Yeah, but she didn't know our version, so I was like, "You do you do it or do I do it?" Or do you just want to take it? It's yours. I couldn't stop crying. It was so embarrassing. Every picture of me is like, <laughs> like it's so. It was so cool. It was crazy. That is the coolest. But did you get? To, could you say anything, or you just were like, <laughs> "I don't remember." Out. Yeah. She it was. We were in a group picture at one point. She was holding my hand, and I, I was just kind of looking down at her hand. <laughs> so I don't know. And you haven't washed it since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try to avoid that hand. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to smell. Uh, we do have a couple of questions from the awesome. audience before we get out of here. Who is the first one right here? Hi. I am one of those people that finally just saw this play Yay. a little while ago. It was amazing, and you're both wonderful. Um, I want to just touch on a question for Corey, yes. following a question that you uh, answered before. Um, the role of Jerry is um, complicated. You know, he's so talented but so flawed. Yeah. 
And I just wanted to get a sense of how you approach that. Um, is it about demonstrating how talented he is? Is it how 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 did you feel about exposing all of those flaws that he had? Yeah, you know, uh, it was terrifying because it, you know to portray his brilliance but also his flaws. Um, you know, he it, for those of you who don't know, Jerry uh, dealt with mental illness throughout his his entire life. Uh, he was bipolar before bipolar was a thing. He had manic depression, um, and and there are lots of moments in the show that that comes out. Um, and he wasn't a bad guy. He was ill. Um, and, you know, I was just talking about this in the green room. Um, Carol's one piece of advice for Jerry's or her one request for Jerry's is don't let the audience hate him because she still loves him. You know, even even though he's passed on, uh, you know, she she apparently wears his ashes around her neck. So so, you know, there's there's a deep love for this man from her and she knew him better than anyone else. So the the way that I approached it was taking that uh that golden nugget that she gave, um, knowing how much he hurt her, but the love that she had, and <clears throat> sort of building him from there, being like, okay, this this man must have been something special, um, if if he could do what he did to her and still, you know, receive undying love from her, um, and uh, you know, he he was he was a normal guy. He just like had had a lot of uh, a lot of junk with him. Um, and, and doing justice to mental illness was a huge uh, priority of mine because the last thing I wanted was for anyone in the audience who, who deals with those issues to be like, that's not how it is, or, or to feel that I'm making a mockery of it. Um, and so that was, that was a huge priority of mine. Yeah. Thank you. You can tell how much she loves him from this because he, what he's going through is handled very delicately and with a lot of respect and love. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you said, it would be easy to villainize him. Yeah. And the musical doesn't do that at any moment. You always sort of understand that he's going through something bigger than him. And I think, I think we all have, have someone like that, whether it's you know, a friend or, or a family member or a loved one um, who, who has hurt you in a way, but you have this love for them that you you always forgive or you're always giving a second chance. I think that everyone has experienced that and so they can relate to that in, in some capacity. Absolutely. Next question. Hi there. Hey. Hey, Hi. I want to know if um, there were any other iconic artists that you would want to portray on stage. Oh my God. Um, I've always wanted, I have always wanted to be Janis Joplin, but oh. I fear that role. <laughs> I think, oof, that's, um, I, I can't think, do you know? The, I'd pay a lot of money to hear no, you No, I don't, no, 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 no. Man, but oh, man. I, she was like, at kind of my like intro into Carole King and Joni Mitchell and Stevie Nicks and all those kind of singer songwriter gals. So, um, I'm working on my Stevie Nicks impression. So her too, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I would love to be James Taylor in a James Taylor musical. That would be a lot of fun. Um, I, would, I would love to like do a John Mayer musical, but I can't play guitar like that. <laughs> no one can. We've got pits for that. Exactly. I mean, we can, yeah, yeah. We can, right? we can mime it. it. No. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to see both of you in both of those roles. I'm going to manifest it for you right now. Done. It's going to happen. Um, I'm so happy that I got a chance to see uh, Beautiful Before It Closed for so many reasons. First, I did not realize what a prolific composer Carol King is and was. Like the... She was a genius. She was Bach. She was Beethoven, you know, for that era with the music she created. And I think a lot of people in the audience will come away feeling like they have a better understanding of her, her background, and how her music will live on. And your performances just do it so much service and credit. And so I just have to thank you for that because you guys are so talented and so much Thanks. fun to watch. Um, so wow. if you guys want to feel like me and check out Beautiful, it will be running through October 27th at the Stephen Sondheim Theater. Put your hands together for Sarah Bockel and Corey Jacoma. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much.